Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and today we're going to kick off a video series that deals with several different aspects of the design process. Now, we're going to start by talking about 3D scanning, laser scanning that deals with creating a mesh or creating a point cloud. Uh, and we're going to look at the scan to 3D tools in SolidWorks that we can use the mesh data that we get and manipulate it and eventually turn it into some surfaces that we can use. Then we're going to talk about the design process. We're going to design a simple part that will mate to the surface that we're creating. So we're starting out with some real world information. We're scanning it, bringing it into SolidWorks, creating our surfaces, and then we're going to design for 3D printing. So whenever you start a design process, you always need to have the understanding of the end result, the end product, if it's going to be machined, it's going to be hand fabricated from your drawings, if it's going to be injection molded or 3D printed or whatever other process that you can go through. So we're going to talk about some of the differences between 3D printed parts and designing for molding or for machining or whatever it might be. We're going to end up, at the very end of this, we're going to talk about saving your files. Now, it might seem kind of silly to talk about saving files, but when you're dealing with 3D printing, it's very important that you understand the options you have when you're saving out your files because you could save a file with a certain type of resolution and it could make a horrible print and you don't know why. So we'll talk a little bit about that at the very end. So to get started, the first thing we need to do is turn on Scan to 3D. So we're going to go to our Tools menu, go to Add-ins, and turn on Scan to 3D. Now as soon as we do this, we can go to our open menu and you get a few different file types once you turn on scan to 3D. Now, you have all these different CAD types. You have IGIS, step files, you know, all these generic type files, and then you have CATIA, ProE, Unigraphics, Inventor. But you don't have your mesh and your point cloud files until you turn on scan to 3D. So now that we have these, we can take a look at these .pli files, which are basically polygon files. We're going to take a look at, in this case, SRX-LEFT2. Now, before we select Open, there are a few options here. So if we hit the Options button, you'll notice that we can select the units that we're dealing with. Then you also have this checkbox here that says Merge Meshes to Remove Overlap. If you're dealing with a specific file, now this PLY file that we're dealing with is a single scan, but if you're dealing with a file that has multiple scans, this option right here will allow it to automatically trim any overlapping mesh entities or any sections of point clouds that overlap. So basically remove any duplicate data and it'll stitch them all together into one mesh. So it makes working with it a little bit easier. There's also a option down at the bottom that says texture file. So if there's a specific texture file you want to apply to your mesh when you bring it in, you can browse for that and you can add it on here. For us, we're dealing with a single file, so we don't need to worry about that per se. But we're going to go ahead and set our units to inches and open this file. Now once you open this file, you're going to get all kinds of data, all kinds of information here. And the first thing you'll notice is that in your feature tree, it only says mesh. Now if you leave this as a mesh, there's really not much you can do with it. You can't really select it. You can't do any extrudes up to. You can't use it to slice any information. It's really hard to use this information to do anything until you manipulate it and work with it. Now what we have here is the Scan to 3D toolbar. Now if you right click up here in your command manager, you simply need to go down to Scan to 3D and turn that on. That's the easiest way to get to the few tools that we have. When we're looking at our toolbar, you see that there are several different icons here. The first all the way to the left is the option to use the next engine scanner. If you're using that specific 3D scanner, you can control it directly from SolidWorks and scan that information directly into SolidWorks. We're dealing with a third party scanner that is not the next engine scanner, so we have the PLY file that was saved out from its proprietary program. Next we have our mesh prep wizard. Now this is a very important step and we're going to go through this for our specific example here. The Mesh Prep Wizard is the section that allows you to do things like trim, remove extra data that you don't need, you can simplify your mesh, you can smooth it, you can do all these different things, you can fill holes. So that's the first step in the process. The next option here is Mesh Edit. Now this is not the same as editing with the Mesh Prep Wizard. Mesh Edit simply is, allows you to do things like move, rotate, scale which you can do within the mesh prep wizard as well. But mesh edit allows you to do simple things like move or, or locate them within your environment. 
there is a curve wizard, which again, this curve wizard is another great step. It doesn't have to be used, but it is a step that you can use to extrapolate curvature information from your mesh. Now, it's very important that you understand the quality of the scan and the quality of the information that you're getting. So we will go through the curve wizard and we will take a look at how to use that. But it's important to note, if we zoom into our mesh here, you can see that we have a lot of bumps, a lot of information. Now, depending on the scanner you're using, how much information you're capturing, whatever your settings are, you may get a smoother result, you may get a bumpier result than this. So, if you're going to use the curve wizard without doing any mesh prep, the resulting curves might be pretty bumpy, might be pretty hard to use. So, we're going to take a look at that a little bit later, but we're going to prep this thing first. The next thing that we have is the surface wizard. Now, you can jump right into the surface wizard, but it's always a good idea to go through the mesh prep wizard first. The surface wizard allows you to create a surface within SOLIDWORKS. And there's several different options there, and we're going to have to take a look at those individually. But the two main options are going to be the automatic creation and the guided creation. Now, the automatic creation will automatically go through and create patches of your surface based on whatever mesh edits you've done. So if you've cut away a small section of this, you smoothed it out, you've done what you can, it will create an exact fit for with whatever standards you give it. But an exact fit surface based on a bunch of random patches. I don't really know how it comes up with the patch shapes, but it's going to be very random. The reason this is important is because if you're going to use this surface to, let's say, extrude up to or use it to cut a solid body or whatever it might be, the end of your solid is going to have all these funky patches or you know polygons that are used to create the surface. If you need a perfect exact copy of whatever you're dealing with here, that might be a great example if you're dealing with a very complex surface. The other option, the guided creation, allows you to use tools like creating a revolve or creating a boundary, creating a loft, and these different operations will be used to create a close fit surface. Now the surface will not match the boundary of your mesh. It'll be a larger surface that you'll then have to trim and, and manipulate, but it will give you, in most cases, a cleaner, smoother surface that won't necessarily be an exact representation of whatever specific geometry you're dealing with, depending on how you create it, but it'll give you a better result to use in the end. So there are obviously a few things that you have to understand and have to deal with whenever you're talking about mesh manipulation and the end resulting surface that you're getting. As I said, we're going to walk through all of these and, and we're going to take a look at them. The last one here is deviation analysis. It's basically what it sounds like. It'll allow you to take a closer look at the resulting information that you're dealing with here. So uh, that's going to be our last step. So we're going to start with the mesh prep wizard and move into actually creating the surface here. But this first video is just an intro into what we're going to do and an intro into scan to 3D. So Join us in the next video where we're going to start creating our manipulated mesh that we can use for our surfaces. If you guys have any questions, please email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time.